Hey guys, Andrew here. It's been a few weeks, but I can report that I've safely transitioned into my new home in Minnesota and have started my new job. Everything is going very smoothly and things are starting to settle down. So I'm looking forward to getting back to making some channel videos here. So anyway, this is my EDC around July of 2016. Not a lot of crazy changes if you've been watching the channel since last December when I posted my most recent EDC video. Actually, I've pretty much been using the same knives that I have. I haven't bought a lot of knives in the last six months. Just kind of watching and seeing what's coming out and haven't made up my mind about what's really pulling me as far as my interests go. So actually, if there are any knives that have come out in the last six months that really are interesting to you, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll be interested in hearing about it. Up to bat first is my Spyderco Dragonfly. This is, of course, the Dragonfly in super blue, a laminated steel. And it is definitely not the prettiest knife in my collection, but it is just about the most versatile. Of course, the blade shape and specialty steel, which holds a fantastic edge, is a major part of this but also the lightweight and excellent wire clip are the reasons why I find myself carrying this knife probably more than any other knife these days. They definitely work great in a more formal setting where you just need something very discreet. I actually use this for all kinds of things that you wouldn't think a smaller knife like this would be good for, uh, such as having a steak, which I just had earlier this uh, afternoon at lunch. It was um, perfectly well-suited knife with its flat ground blade for cutting tasks on a practical and culinary level and I definitely enjoy using this knife a lot. Complementing my dragonfly nicely is this tactile turn pen from Will Hodges at Tactile Turn. A beautifully machined pen with great ergonomics and design and I still find myself carrying this pen in my briefcase every day really enjoying it. I would have never thought that my knife art Sebenza 21, the small Sebenza, is a knife that would be particularly controversial, but if you've checked out my 40 versus $400 knife, people act like this knife doesn't have any particular value at its price range. Well, as far as my own ownership experience goes, I can't say anything except the contrary. This has been an absolute pleasure to own, and I think it's worth every penny and I feel like I've got a whole life of ownership in front of me with this knife. Complementing my Sebenza very well is this Max Magco Bolt Action Pen. This is the lightweight version in anodized black and I have to say that it is just so sleek and gorgeous. It has the best bolt action, smoothest and most responsive bolt action of any bolt action pen that I've owned and it is really a work of art. Definitely the fit and finish is right up there with the tactile turn. Uh, and it's lighter weight, a little skinnier. So for me, this is about as good as it gets with ballpoint pens. This Max Magco Bolt Action Pen, absolutely fantastic, especially in the lightweight version in black. It is just so stealthy and cool. As far as watches go, I'm definitely keeping it pretty casual over the summer. And one of my favorite watches in my collection right now is this vintage Aura Star, kind of a original. I don't have a huge vintage collection, um, but it is definitely a very special dive watch for me. Uh, a little bit on the smaller side, this one I believe is 36 millimeters. It's got 18 millimeter wide lugs, but I just absolutely am in love with that fantastic plexi dome, the patina of course, and really that faded bezel for me takes the cake. Wearing it on a NATO of course is perfect for casual wear, the sweat and grime of the summer months is something that this watch, I don't want to expose it to too much, but it is a sports watch and I do wear it when I am out and about and so far it has been holding up marvelously. Perhaps not a surprise, I'm still in love with my Seiko Turtle. This watch, the SRP775, is the two-tone kind of vintage colorway of the Seiko Turtle. Uh, not only has this watch been, you know, keeping awesome time and been really an enjoyable, easy watch to wear with the big cushion case and the 
hacking movement. Uh, it's also a really sturdy watch. I actually got into a mini bike crash. Uh, it's really stupid of me earlier this summer and I was wearing this watch. As you can see here, the watch was actually protecting my wrist. So uh, the, the often maligned Seiko bracelet, maligned by me even sometimes, held up very well. The clasp was a little bent up comes loose a little bit more easily but that is something I just need to fiddle with. Um, kudos to Seiko for making a very sturdy bracelet that held up to a crash on a mini bike in the street so don't be stupid people. My latest watch is the Seiko SCC 013 a really clean bright friendly chronograph that utilizes a Seiko quartz solar movement and as you can see it just has a very classic design very straightforward three sub dial layout with a date and it's just a watch that's great to have in the collection uh, very nice construction for a 200 hundred dollar chronograph i've been really happy with it and of course you can't help but notice these gorgeous new wing tips these are markors which are a pakistani shoe brand from a Kickstarter campaign initially, now they are running their own website. And I have to say that these shoes, which were sent to me for review and I've been wearing them quite a bit lately, are absolutely stunning and impeccable in construction. Another great contender to mainstay brands in dress shoes, it's just cool to see people coming up with fantastic, clean designs and utilizing top-notch materials in construction. I will be definitely looking forward to doing a review of these shoes sometime soon. But in the meantime, as you can see, the construction on these things is just killer. One major asset to my current job and something I was really proud to acquire as a gearhead was my first Filson briefcase. And this version here has tin cloth exterior compartments and covers. So it's just the classic Filson design gorgeous big zippers of course made in seattle with their bridal leather their tin cloth which is actually manufactured by barber to my understanding and then you've got a combination of compartments one compartment here great for uh, as you can see here i've got a little laptop and some paperwork a center compartment with room for pens and slots for things like usb sticks and then another third compartment which is uh, very similar to the other side which is basically just an open compartment. On the back here, you can see there's a just quick uh, uh, sleeve here for dropping in papers, and there's another one on the front. Uh, I took the strap off of this just because I haven't been using it. For an all-around briefcase that I think will hold up to the elements of Minnesota really well, I couldn't find anything better, and I've been absolutely pleased with the construction and materials used on this thing. Just looks like it's gonna hold up for a long time. I'm really looking forward to breaking it in more, but I think it's beautiful as it is already with this slightly darker cotton wax cloth here with the tin cloth exterior. I'm sure some of you guys will be asking me for the model number on this. This is style 70153, and of course it is made by Filson in the USA with some imported materials since uh, the tin cloth is made in England. Definitely a rock solid briefcase. I was looking at some leather briefcases and honestly I wanted the weatherproofness of this tin cloth and the fact that uh, as it breaks in it'll have fantastic patina. So I am really looking forward to that. If any of you guys are wondering what kind of computer I'm rocking these days, this is the Dell XPS 13. It is just using the i5 processor and it does have the matte screen, which is actually my preference. I don't need the touch screen, but it is fantastically compact and a very solid PC alternative to a MacBook, which is what I was looking at. So far, it has been absolutely killer. Works fantastic for my uses. Really enjoying that laptop. For my camera bag, lately I've been using the Mountain Smith Endeavor. This is a great bag with just a little bit more room than some of the backpacks that I've shown you previously. I am intending to do a review on this, been using it now for a number of months and it is a fantastic bag for camera gear. Still shooting on my 60D with my Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 art lens and I hope the footage looks good to you today. It's nice to be outside. All right, well thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed my EDC, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, I want to invite you to become a subscriber. Of course, let me know what your EDC is around this time of year as of July 2016. 
I'll be very happy to see in the comments below what you guys are carrying these days. And as always, thanks a lot for your time. 